about going to see Poltergeist. Oh, oh, what theater are you in? I don't remember exactly yeah. how you how you phrased it. And I said, "You got to be fucking kidding me!" <laughs> out loud. And the girls looked at me, and I was like, "Oh, that was awkward." And it, her dad looked at me like, "You fucking asshole." <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Nerd You're Looking For podcast, a weekly nerd culture podcast that discusses the culture through various segments. My name is Patrick Kuhn, alongside my co-host as always, that Tyler Hunt. How's it going, man? It's going pretty well. How are you? I'm all right. It's been a long day, but I'm not going to I'm not going to complain <laughs> about work again. I feel like I start every episode <laughs> like that, so I refuse. Today was a shit show, but I refuse <laughs> to complain about it because I feel like that's every open of every episode yeah so yeah, I, yeah. I won't complain about that but i did uh get another show for stand-up we we talked about that That's a couple cool. episodes ago so i'll be doing stand-up uh this coming monday and i'm i'm really looking forward to Where it at? well i i guess it'll be today if you're listening to this <laughs> when it when it when it drops so um it's a, a bar a lamasco's in here in yeah. evansville they have an open mic every monday and what so time? i talked to a couple of, what what time uh, I believe it starts at nine, nine o'clock. I talked to a couple of my buddies that do stand up as well and they're planning on doing it. So it's, it's kind of weird because it's not a comedy open mic. So I, I've, I've wanted to do this particular open mic for a while, but I haven't had new material. Plus I also wanted to make sure there was other comedians coming because it's a little weird to do the kind of comedy that I do following like a guy that barely knows how to play his acoustic guitar. It gets a little awkward. When you say it's an open mic, so somebody could get up there and play guitar. Yes. Not necessarily do stand-up. Okay, yes. gotcha. So that's why I, I kind of wanted to do it a week that I knew a couple other comedians that I know were going to be there. So yeah. it wasn't just like me going up there in between two acoustic guitar guys. Yeah. So that would be really weird. I might come. I have to work early Tuesday, so I don't know, but I might come. Yeah, it'll be a good time. I'm looking forward to it. It's been a while. It's been too long, actually. I've been kind of getting uh, the itch to to get back up there. So uh, it'll be nice. I got a few new jokes. I'll, I'll probably stay pretty heavy on some of the old stuff that I do. But I do have a few cu- a couple of new jokes that I'm looking forward to, to kind of debuting. One I've done one other time, but I've tweaked it a little bit. Cool. Yep. So if this is your first episode, uh, we start off the episode by just kind of checking in with each other. We call it What We're Into. So Tyler, what are you into this week? I wanted to talk about a movie I watched last night with my wife. I had briefly heard about it, and I saw it on my Apple TV with the under the movie section, and it really piqued my interest. So we, Wolf Cop? We, no. <laughs> no. We, we, it's funny, though. It's in the same vein, I think, as oh, Wolf okay, Cop. Oh, okay, cool. A little bit. Um, it's What We Do in the Shadows. Oh, dude, I fucking love this movie. Have you seen, did you watch oh, yeah. it? Oh, oh well, I'm God. glad that you, uh, pay attention to the, the blog. Cause I reviewed it like <laughs> did three you, months ago. Did you really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I thought I stumbled across like this amazing thing. And no, you know, it's, I mean, it, I know it's, I know it's pretty well known, but I didn't know that you had any idea what it was. <laughs> oh yeah. I fucking love that movie. That movie's no, fantastic. Isn't it great? It's, it's so funny. Um, I, Brittany and I watched the trailer for it and immediately we're like, we gotta watch this. It looks so good. And it was, it was really hilarious. I was a little worried about it being film documentary style, but that's part of its charm and its humor. Oh yeah, for sure. And then of course, like all the people in it are just hilarious. I, I wasn't familiar with, I'm going to butcher his name. He plays Viago, though. It's Taika Watiti. That's actually pretty impressive. I'm not going to try, but, I mean, I've heard it pronounced, and that's actually is pretty, pretty close. close. Yeah, I've, I had never heard of him before, and he is awesome in it. He's, he's directed a few episodes of uh, Flight of the Concords. Okay, and he yeah. directed this with Jermaine Clement, too. Yep. So, I mean, I was expecting to like Jermaine Clement a lot, because I'm familiar with him. I'm out of the entire cast. I'm most familiar with him. Yeah, for sure. So I figured that he would kind of steal a show. But honestly, it was Vi- the character of Viago that really Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He it, carries that movie. Oh, yeah, for sure. It Especially was, in the 
in the beginning before it kind of finds its groove a little yeah. bit. His character is definitely the favorite. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You. I mean, you start the movie with his character and he introduces you to everybody and he's just. I love how oh he uh, he checks every morning to make sure <laughs> that it's nighttime. Yeah. I yeah. think that's hilarious. I mean, that's such a it's such a little thing, but. It, Obviously, if vampires did exist, then that would be something that they'd be obviously concerned about. So I just think it's such a a fun little detail that they threw into the movie. Oh yeah, there and there's tons of little details like that too. It, it really is like, what if vampires existed and we're doing day to day things like, oh yeah, it's, like it's paying great. rent and cleaning up after each other and being roommates, and it's just it's hilarious. So yeah. I can't recommend it enough. I, I really love this movie. Yeah, I also recommended it very highly three months ago when I reviewed it on the website. That's exactly why I watched it, because you recommended it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's it. No, it was it was really good, though. All right, cool, man. What are you into? Um, well, I'll keep mine pretty brief, because it, it's already happened. So um, I can't really promote something um, that's already happened. But I went to my first film festival the other day. Well, it was actually Saturday, so last week. It was a May Day film festival, and it was something that happens apparently every year in Evansville, (laughs) uh, and I've never heard of it before. (laughs) The only reason I actually heard about it was one of my comedian buddies, uh, Gavin. He did a movie, which I knew he had, he was working on, and he did a short film called Dungeons and Dating, Uh and it got into this film festival. It actually ended up getting into Gen Con too. Which, if you're listening and you're going to Gen Con, check it out. It's awesome. I really enjoyed it. But I'll get to that here in a second. Basically, I went to this this film festival not really knowing what I was getting myself into. Never been to one before. And I was pleasantly surprised at how much I liked it. Unfortunately, I was way too busy that weekend. I could only go to see one block of films. Like They basically just broke it up. They had two screens going at Showplace South. The best show place. <laughs> yeah. If you live in Evansville, you know that that's like the shittiest <laughs> one. It's basically, I think every major city has it though. It's, it's the theater that shows like Kingsman was still yeah, playing. Yeah, it's there. the $2 movie. Yeah, exactly. Theater, yeah. So they had two screens and each screen had like a block of movies. And so I went to the 530 to 8 uh, PM block because that obviously that was when Ga- Gavin's movie was playing. But I was also in interested in seeing the other films and i was really pleasantly surprised at um how good they were the first movie i saw was uh no more messages and i wish i had written down uh who did these movies this movie was i think it was like it wasn't quite 10 minutes long so it was definitely a really really short film and it was just fantastic i loved how in what was a little less than 10 minutes he told a great story like you fell in love with this character. Well, falling in love is a little bit. It's it's a dark movie, but I mean, you felt for this character. It's basically about this guy who his wife or his girlfriend, I'm, I'm guessing, died in a car crash, something like that. Yeah. And he had a voicemail from her, and he was just how he grieved was he just listened to the voicemail over and over again, and it was the last piece of thing that he had from her. Yeah. And so it's really depressing. And then he ends up losing his phone. And so he doesn't have that voicemail anymore. And it was really awesome how, and probably awesome is the wrong word, (laughs) but uh, it was great to see how this particular writer, director, again, I wish I had written down who it was, told this great story in such a little amount of time. And he didn't bother with the minutia of what actually happened to her because you don't necessarily need to know what happened to her. You kind of get that he's grieving. So you understand that she's no longer with him, whether that happened in a car wreck or she got mugged or whatever happened. It doesn't matter. The What matters is this guy grieving. So I thought that was really impressive. Second movie was Gavin's movie, uh, Dungeon uh, Dating. And I mean, like I said, he's, he's a stand up. He's fantastic. He's hilarious, and this movie was great. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I was very impressed on how just legit it looked. Yeah. 
it was really smart the way he did it. It felt like it was a bottle episode of a TV show. It was just about this this group of guys that play Dungeons and Dragons once a week or twice a week. I don't know. They didn't really explain it in the movie because it wasn't important. Yeah. And it was just they went over to this guy's apartment and they were going to play Dungeons and Dragons. And one of the guys that was supposed to be the dungeon master brought a girl over. And it was just the classic bros before hoes kind of that, that friend dynamic sort of thing. And it was really hilarious. I could have done without seeing Gavin nipples because he's shirtless throughout the entire like 25 minute movie. And it was awkward. But other than that, it was really funny. It was a lot of like running gags in it. They don't come up with good names for things. Cause in Dungeons and Dragons, you come up with most of the material. Yeah. You give names for everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it was kind of a running gag that they come up with really shitty names. And <laughs> it's really funny. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. He wrote and directed it and he starred in it. So I, I, I was definitely really impressed with it. The third movie I saw was not great. <laughs> uh, it was called, uh, Cowboy Ninjas of 2090, I think is what it was called. And I mean, I don't, I don't mean to shit on someone because making a film like this, it was like 45 minutes. Oh, wow. It can be expensive and it, it can be an ordeal. So I don't want to shit on them, but it just wasn't for me. I understood what they were trying to do. That it was kind of a Western satire, but it just didn't work for me. I just didn't think it was funny. I don't think that he understands that there's a difference between ninjas and zam- samurais because the guy was dressed like a samurai, but he called him a ninja. And that bothered me. <laughs> I know that's not the point, <laughs> but it bothered me. And it just it wasn't great. And I, I actually started to feel bad for him because the theater, for the most part, was was filled c- to capacity and people started to file out during this oh, movie. Yikes. And I wasn't going to be that guy, even though. It was tough to watch at parts. I I was just not going to be disrespectful and walk out. Um, I waited until the movie is over <laughs> to walk out. I mean, it just wasn't for me. I, I get what he was doing, and it just wasn't my type of comedy. I, I laughed a couple of times, but if you're going to do a movie like this on such a low budget, I just don't think it works. That being said, I, I'm definitely open to going to more of them. It was really refreshing to go into a movie and have literally no expectations. Uh-huh. I had no idea what this was, what the, uh, what these movies were going to be about. So that was kind of cool. I enjoyed that. I would definitely be open to to going to to a, another film festival, maybe even this one next year. I wish I hadn't have been working because that would have been actually no, I wasn't working. I was out of town. But I, whenever you told me about it, it was something that sounded really interesting and something like that I would want to go to. So next time you go, let me know. Yeah, for sure. The next segment is plainly titled Comics. We also need to come up with better names for things. (laughs) And we just spotlight uh, one comic book that we've read this week. So, Tyler, what are you reading this week? I hinted at it last week. And I guess it's not really fudging it a little bit. It's not a comic. It's a graphic novel. but um, Pretty much the same thing. Yeah, it is. So, I am just finished last night, actually, Batman Earth 1 Volume 2. Okay. By uh, Jeff Johns and illustrated by Gary Frank. And I loved it quite a bit. I really loved the first volume, and I've been looking forward to the second volume for quite a while. I think the first volume came out in 2012, so there's been quite a gap between volumes, but it was definitely worth the wait. So the thing with these Earth-1 graphic novels is what it does is it takes the these DC characters that we're really familiar with, and it kind of tries to put it put them in more of a grounded situation or, you know, a grounded universe. So it's like Batman in the real world. They've also done Superman and they've done Teen Titans, which I haven't read, but it's, it's really cool. This one um, had to deal with Riddler and actually Killer Croc's in it as well, which is kind of cool seeing such an outlandish character like Killer Croc taken and put into a real world type scenario. And then you have Harvey Dent in it and it introduces a lot of new characters I, I would say what these comics or um, what these graphic novels are most known for probably is kind of introducing Alfred as a badass. Um, yeah. That, that was something that the first volume got a lot of uh, attention for was Alfred wasn't a butler. He was like this mercenary spy type guy that just knew Thomas Wayne and 
uh, when the Waynes died, they had ended up putting Bruce into Alfred's custody and he was kind of, uh, hesitant to take custody, but he ended up training him to be Batman and so on and so forth. So it's really cool to see how they turn the Batman mythos on their head. Like things that you expect to happen don't happen. And I'll, I'll leave it at that just so anybody who out there who wants to read it and can kind of experience the twists and turns for themselves. But I really recommend it. It's an easy jumping on point. I mean, there's only two volumes of it. And it's, yeah. you could almost pick up volume two and be completely fine um, without reading volume one. But I highly suggest reading both. And then I just wanted to point out that Gary Frank's artwork is amazing. It's it's so it's one of the most beautiful comics I've ever read. And I think that that's probably why it's taken them a long time to publish it is because he puts so much detail into every frame that. I imagine it took him forever to illustrate this book. So I can't recommend it enough. Batman Earth 1 Volume 2. Is it like kind of like a one shot sort of thing? Obviously, yeah. it's not canon. No, it's not canon. So it, it's it's its own little thing. It's not yeah. part of the <clears throat> New 52, which doesn't exist anymore. And obviously, it doesn't have anything to do with Convergence and all that stuff. It's just a one off Batman story. Did you ever read uh, Batman Black and White? Because it sounds kind of like that. No, I didn't. I know there's been very different variations of the black and white. Are you talking about the most recent? Yeah. Well, no, I I bought those and I haven't read them yet. They, yeah, they're, they're kind of weird. Yeah. Neil Adams does this like zombie uh, Batman thing that was kind of weird, but it sounds similar and I might be off base, yeah. but I, I haven't read yeah. this Earth One stuff. I, I respect Neil Adams, but I think he's, I don't, I'm not into his stuff too much. So no, but I mean, Jeff Johns, like I said, wrote this and he's like DC's chief creative officer and i don't know that that's the right title but he's pretty high up in the food chain at dc so it's pretty cool that he can take time out and still write comics like this for sure all right man what comic are you into well we talked a little bit about it um last episode uh, i brought up uh, secret wars number one and i mentioned that i hadn't gotten to secret wars number two because i get it in the mail and it just hadn't come yet well i got secret wars number two just in time for Secret Wars number three to be released as well. So that's kind of a bummer that I'm always going to be one week behind. But Tyler, you brought up, you had, you had read it before the last episode and you had brought up that you thought it was weird and that there was a lot of unfamiliar characters. And I will agree with you, but I don't necessarily think that that was a bad thing. Yeah. Like I think with the first issue, Secret Wars number one, it started off with a bang. And these two comics, it's going to be a weird analogy, but it reminded me of like a mixtape. You got to start off with a bang, but you don't want to blow your load. So you got to take it back a notch. And I think they did a really good job of that. You're just laughing because I said, blow your load. You know a lot about making (laughs) mixtapes. Hey, man, mixtapes are awesome. (laughs) Kids, if you're listening right now, mixtapes are things that people used to do before we had (laughs) iTunes. Anyways, so I think with a story like this, you have to give some backstory. And issue one didn't really do any of that. It was just chaos. There was tons of stuff going on. I think issue two did a great job of kind of stepping back a little bit and giving you a lot more backstory. It kind of set the stage for the rest of the issues. It kind of reminded me a little of a Game of Thrones. There was a lot of, a lot of stuff going on. And a lot of like Game of Thronesy kind of uh, just stuff. It, it's hard to explain without really spoiling anything, but I, I really liked it. I, I thought it was interesting how there's there's Thor's. There's just a ton of Thor's. It reminded me a lot of uh, the Spider Verse that happened like six months ago or whatever, yeah. where there's just a million Spider Man, and so it reminded me of that a lot. And then I liked how they made the newest Thor basically the audience like the reader that you were you were learning all these things as they were teaching it to this new thor yeah so i thought that was an interesting way of doing it not just kind of doing in narration they were they were talking to the new thor getting his training done or whatever you want to call it but i I really like it it's definitely weird I, i would definitely agree with that and i think that it presents more questions than it answers but like I said, I, I think it, it sets the stage for the rest of this mini series. 
I don't like it. I, I was <laughs> I, I was very vocal about that last week. Um, I just I don't like Battle World. I think it's dumb. I think that it stole a lot from Game of Thrones, which is dumb. I mean, they're Marvel. They have uh, they should you just call the Game of Thrones dumb. No, it's <laughs> it's dumb that they had to borrow from Game of Th- like make it Game of Thronesy. It's like it's Marvel and yeah. You should have all sorts of original ideas, and I'm not saying it's like a direct ripoff, but it's a direct ripoff. Yeah, there's a fucking wall. They're, yeah, they're like just like Game of Thrones, and and Mister Sinister sits on the Iron Throne, and Doctor Doom. Is it Doctor Doom? Yeah. See, they I will... literally call him Doom. I, th- I could have swore they called him Mister Sinister, something sinister. I obviously wasn't even paying attention because <laughs> clearly because it, it really didn't hold my attention. But either way. Not a fan, but I'm going to keep reading it. All right, cool. So our next segment, I'm just going to kind of give it to Tyler because this is his baby. Well, I wouldn't say that. (laughs) I I only do it because you fought me on it last episode, too. (laughs) I mean, you post most of these stories throughout the week on Twitter and Facebook, but um, nerd news. So every episode, we take a few minutes to talk about some of the headlines and stories that have come up since the last time we talked about the things we love in movies and TV and comics and video games and all sorts of nerdy fun stuff. So I'm going to dive right into a couple stories here. The first one became like this huge story, and it's really not a huge story. It's just this silly thing that Bob Iger said. Um, he's the Disney CEO, and he was talking about these branded channels like Disney and ABC and ESPN. And he said, maybe even down the road, something related to star Wars and Marvel. And all of a sudden, all of these news sites started talking about how Disney was going to make in the future, a Marvel TV channel or a Disney TV channel. Yeah. I'm sorry, not Disney. Um, Star Star Wars. Wars. Yeah. And I don't think that that's what he was implying, but it became like this huge thing. And it got me thinking, can, can too much of something be a bad thing? Too much of a good thing be a bad thing? Do we really eventually need a Marvel TV channel or a, a Star Wars TV channel? Obviously, I'd be interested in seeing either one of those things, but yes, I think so. I think you could do maybe Marvel easier than you could do Star Wars. I guess you could argue that the Star Wars universe is just as big as the Marvel universe, but there's so much more Marvel content that you could put on it. You think about all the cartoons they've had and the movies they've had and the shows. Oh, so you're thinking just like almost like a Netflix, like they're not necessarily making original content. My mind went straight to oh. making original content. I would imagine there'd be original content on it, but well, not that you'd there's ha- not original content on Netflix. <laughs> it, but. it makes me think of whenever they rolled out G4. Did you ever watch G4 very much? When it was a thing. I, I remember watching uh, yeah. reruns of Arrested Development on yeah. G4. Well, whenever G4... Or was that Spike? It doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. <laughs> whenever, whenever G4 first became a channel, they had like new programming from 7 to 10 at night. And then everything else for the rest of the day was just reruns of stuff. And things that they bought the rights to, like Arrested Development or whatever. And they showed that. So I'd re- imagine if this were to ever come to fruition, there would be... Original content here and there, at first at least, and then the rest of it would just be shit that we've seen, sure. which is fine. I mean, you can't fill 24 hours of programming with new stuff right off the bat, but I'd imagine it would be easier to do it with a Marvel channel than it would with Disney or a Star Wars channel. Sure. All right. You could just play the Star Wars Christmas. <laughs> the Christmas special. <laughs> On a loop. <laughs> I mean, you have Clone Wars, and now you have Star Wars Rebels, but there's not been a lot of Star Wars stuff. Yeah. Besides the movies. So you maybe way down the line. Sure. All right. Uh, this next one, I don't think we're going to have much to say about it, but I'm going to bring it up anyways. So I guess common is going to be in suicide squad and <laughs> which I didn't know. And I guess people at first thought he might be playing John Stewart, green lantern, which would be a weird addition to that movie. But people are thinking now he might be playing black Manta, which is Aquaman's main adversary. So, do you have any thoughts on that? I kind of figured. Uh, no, I mean, <laughs> I, I literally have no words. That's, I, I mean, I, I really don't like common. No. And that's, I mean, I get Black Manta's kind of a silly looking character, but if you're going to reinvent these characters and have Jason Momoa it's playing African Aqu- America. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, not, I'm not even going to say anything. Um, but if you're going to like have Jason Momoa playing Aquaman and trying to make it serious and you got to do better than common being opposite him. Maybe I don't in know. The Jay Courtney's in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> he, 
He is. Yep. Yeah, but so is so Jared Leto's playing the Joker, and yep. <clears throat> despite everything we might think about his appearance in the movie, he's going to be able to hold his own against Ben Affleck whenever the time comes. Do we really want to see a, an Aquaman movie eventually where Jason Momoa and Common go at it? <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole other story because I don't <laughs> hold either of those actors in very high regard to begin with. Yeah, I, I got gotcha. you. Not that I necessarily hold Ben Affleck in that high of regard, yeah. but I hold them. In, I, and here lately, I do. But well, as a director, yeah, yeah, as an actor, you don't like him in Argo, not particularly. Or Gone Girl? No, I didn't really like Gar- Gone Girl as much as you did. Yeah, I love that movie. Okay. Moving on, uh, I know you for sure, you, you've actually posted most of these, uh, next ones to the Twitter and to the Facebook throughout the week, but we'll go ahead and touch on them real quick anyways. So Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, Krang might be popping up. Excellent. Yeah. There's a lot of people on this movie. Yeah, there is. I mean, it's getting really congested really quickly, but I'm excited for it. Yeah. I think that's awesome. As, you know, we've had what, five? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movies, including the animated one, and we've never seen Krang, right? Yeah, because it's super weird. Yeah, but what <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles <laughs> is super weird. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I love Krang. I think yeah. he's an awesome villain. You like him but- more than Shredder? No, I can't legally <laughs> say that. <laughs> no, I mean, he's awesome. I, I, I enjoy his character a lot. But, I mean, it's super weird, and I yeah. just don't think it's – it's definitely not mainstream, but – it is what it is. I think he, he's going to make that movie better. Yeah. I, I think that it'd be cool. A lot of people didn't like the first one. I think you and I both gave it kind of a favorable review because it was yeah. fun and it was the yeah. turtle. So I think that I don't expect this to be a masterpiece. I don't expect no. it to be like the Godfather, but it's going to be a, probably a fun movie. So yeah, for as sure. As they keep the spirit there like they did with the first one. Yeah. I think this will help. All right, so Matthew McConaughey might be playing Norman Osborn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, which is very, very big rumor. It's not oh, yeah, near confirmed, sure. but I guess that's who Sony and Marvel want to play Norman Osborn in the reboot. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. I mean, if they had broken this news 10 years ago, I'd be like, <laughs> what? But yeah. I mean, obviously after his, uh, Maconnaissance or whatever you want to call it. Uh, That's exactly what I want to call it. <laughs> I mean, he's excellent. I mean, aside from Interstellar, which I wasn't a huge yeah. fan of, I mean, he did a great job in it. It's just I wasn't a fan of the movie. I mean, he's he's been yeah. doing excellent work, so why not? It's funny. There was a story like two days before this story broke where he ta- said in an interview that he had been reading scripts for Marvel and DC yeah. for a while, and he just couldn't f- find anything that he was really too interested in. So, yeah. And then this broke. So I'm yeah. like, maybe there's some legitimacy to it. I, w- I was actually I, – I read that article, and I, I thought it was really interesting that he – He talked about how he didn't find anything that because you have to sign these long contracts, like multiple movie contracts, because they're both trying to build the, well, Marvel's already built this world and DC's attempting to build it. You have to sign on for multiple movies and he just hadn't found anything that he wanted to do for multiple movies. So I, I I thought that was kind of cool because his reputation prior to the last four or five years has been he basically do anything yeah so I, I i was definitely impressed with the fact that he's really choosing his roles uh wisely so i thought that was interesting so he's starting to get to the point where if he would to sign on first this spider-man movie i would trust that it's going to be good because yeah. i trust his I, i'm getting to the point where i trust his opinion on things yeah if he thinks a project's worth signing on to especially if he's going to sign on to more than one movie then he's obviously impressed with what he's seen so far so i'm getting to that point where if he signs on then it kind of piques my interest yeah i agree all right cool well you're you're smiling so i don't know if you really <laughs> I, I imagined him in the green goblin costume saying all right all right all right <laughs> So, Empire of the Dead, which is a comic that I read for a little bit, and I know that you're probably 100% caught up on. So, you stopped reading it? I gave up on it. Oh, really? I get, that's like, disappointing. Like, two weeks before they announced, <laughs> made this announcement that it's going to be a TV show. It's like, son of a bitch. I'm not completely caught up on it. There's two issues that I, I haven't read yet, but I, I really enjoy it. I figured you would. So, for those of you that don't know, Empire of the Dead is a comic book that is written by George Romero. 
Yes. Who did Night of the Living Dead amongst many other uh, zombie movies. And um, they're turning it into a TV show. It's being backed by the production company, production company Demarest. Um, they backed the most wanted man and Tusk. And so they're making this a show. I don't know if they're just going to produce a pilot or what and shop it around the networks. But I'm assuming with the zombie craze that's going on with Walking Dead and I Zombie and everything else in pop culture that it would have no problem at all finding a a buyer. So it's very likely that in the next few years we could see this as a TV show. Yes, and I'm very excited because I think it would work well as a TV show. It has a a very House of Cards kind of feel to it. It's a, a zombie show, and it's kind of a vampire show as well, but it has a lot more to it than that. I mean, George Romero is a fantastic writer. I mean, he's had some few turds here and there, but for the most part, I love his work, so I, I'm definitely looking forward to it. And this comic is awesome. I think it's definitely... Um, Comics, I think, translate well to TV shows. I don't think they, they can translate well to movies, obviously, but I think it's a more of a seamless transition between, uh, comic books and TV shows because you have a long, you have longer to tell a story in comic books and you also have longer to tell a story in a TV show than you do in two hour movie. So I think it's a smart move on his part, and I really enjoy this comic, and uh, I look forward to seeing it if it does become a, a TV show. And I, I like that with The Strain. I've talked about this show a lot. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, it starts back up in uh, July. I'll, I'll, I'll be reviewing every episode like I did for the first season on our website, The Nerds Podcast. I'm looking forward to vampires getting a resurgent after yeah. – all of the Twilight Vampire Diary bullshit. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And True Blood. I know you <laughs> like that show, Tyler. <laughs> uh, that, that I don't know. I haven't. That show has been done for like a year now, and I I still haven't finished it. Oh, really? It's getting. It's taken me six seasons, but it's wearing on me. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's not a good show. It's and I know that, but for some reason I stuck with it for way too long. Yeah, so I'm excited that vampires are becoming badass again. <laughs> yeah, for sure. If you don't want to talk about this, we'll just skip right over it. But I had to put it down because it was a big uh, topic after last weekend. So a lot of outrage about last week's Game of Thrones. Yep. And I know we don't probably want to spoil anything that happened. We probably don't want to dwell on the issues that (laughs) that happened in it. But I feel like it was such a big story. I, I had to bring it up. It was very, very disturbing. Yeah. And I've I've read things here and there, and our friends over there at the Obsessive Viewer talked about it on their latest episode as well. Oh, did they? Yeah. I want, uh, I'll have to listen to that. I'm curious what other people think. Yeah. It, it's funny because I don't think I, I've noticed it until just recently. And obviously all the, the big news sites have been pointing this out for a while. They, they use rape as kind of a crutch on this show. Like I've never <laughs> noticed it before, but after this, this particular episode happened. I was really hoping we could get away without saying the R word. <laughs> <laughs> rape, 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 rape. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Anyways, did you not think it was? Is that, is that the problem? No, 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 no. <laughs> it, it was. Well, cause I mean, <laughs> some people are trying to argue that it wasn't. Um. It, it I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm, it, it I need was. to really watch what I say here. Cause there's anything could possibly come out wrong. That's so, okay. Yeah. It was right. <laughs> yeah, it definitely was. But basically the game of Thrones as great as it is kind of uses that as a plot device and yeah. they use it way too much apparently. And it wasn't something that I had necessarily noticed before, but after this episode and kind of the outcry, um, I started thinking about back on past episodes and it does happen too frequently. Yeah. I don't know. I just think that if I would have been watching this episode and I hadn't known that there was this big thing that happened at the end, cause obviously I watched it a couple days later and it was everywhere. Yeah. So it was hard to avoid that knowing that this happens. And so I'm watching the whole episode waiting for it. And I, I think that if I had just watched it and not known anything about it, it's not that I wouldn't have thought twice. I would have been like, oh, that's really disturbing, but I would have moved on. Like, I wouldn't have let it bother me. I wouldn't have felt the need to get on social media and talk about it or, you know, post an article to a website I work for or something, you know? 
Yeah, because you never feel the need to post an article on the website. Well, I mean, like, if I were to work for, like, IGN or No, something. I got you. Yeah. I don't know. It's just this show is very mature, very adult, and shit like this happens, like, every episode. Yeah. So you're okay with it? I'm not okay with it at all. <laughs> well, I'm not okay with it at all, but as a plot device to get you to hate Roos Bolton, not Roos Bolton, what's, his, what's that fucker's name? Something Bolton. Yeah. Now it's gonna bother me that I don't remember his <laughs> no, name it, because I hate him so much. You said the you said the dad's name, yeah, and now I can't get it up. God damn it! Anyways, Anyways. <laughs> but I mean, I've hated that character since he, he's been. Well, on the yeah, show. I mean, obviously, you're supposed to hate his character. So I think what the, I mean that got you to hate him quite a bit, and you know that Stannis Baratheon is coming. F- I'm now I'm spoiling stuff. <laughs> Stannis Baratheon <laughs> is going to attack King's Landing at some point, and. I don't know. It gets you to root for Stannis, which is probably what they're trying to do. They're trying to sway the audience to root for Stannis, and then knowing this show, they'll kill Stannis. And so you'll be left really pissed off. Ramsey, there we go. Ramsey Bolton. Yep. It, yeah. It's an R1. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I don't have much more to say ab- ab- about the episode. This season so far has been okay. I've been actually pretty disappointed with the season. Yeah, compared to the other ones, for sure. I yeah. I really hope that the second half down the stretch really picks up a little bit. Yeah, they do a, a great job of kind of rewarding people yeah. for their patience. Because there's been a few episodes in past seasons that are kind of just dull. Yeah. And really just setting up the last few episodes of that season. And they really uh, reward you for your patience. And I hope this season uh, definitely does that towards the end. Because... It's been really dull. Yeah, and in all fairness, from what I understand from my friends who read the book, is that there's a lot of chapters in these huge books that are really dull. Like yeah. One of my buddies was saying there's chapters that he completely would skip over because it was yeah. about characters he didn't care about. But, I mean, I, I think that's the idea of having taking a book to a TV show. Is that In the yeah. TV show, you should be good at cutting the fat. Yeah. And right. we shouldn't have to deal with... Not that them just hanging out and just discussing things is boring, because I do like that character development, but these particular episodes have just been really, really dull, and I just need something. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that they are characters that I don't necessarily care about as much as others. I do like the Braun stuff. Obviously, we talked about He's my favorite character. I think him and uh, Jamie, they're a little... uh, storyline is great i like that a lot yeah i didn't necessarily like how it paid off in this last episode really hating cersei oh yeah Uh, yeah, for sure oh yeah yep anyways is that is that it for nerd news actually i have one more thing okay cool and it's not really a news piece it's just something that i saw online this week and i I thought it was interesting enough to bring up and talk about because i would have not that i necessarily wouldn't have ever guessed it but it's it's kind of cool so place called Morph Costumes put together this graph of the most deadly Marvel characters. And it has a bunch of characters sorted into dangerous, deadly, and lethal categories based on how many people they've killed in the comic books. Oh, really? That's interesting. So, and it's it's like direct... So it's Punisher, right? Well, that's what I was going to ask you. <laughs> is So there's three that are classified as lethal, and I was going to see if you could guess the three. And this is not like... Tony Stark built this bomb that killed people before he was Iron Man. This is like straight up, you killed somebody hand to hand combat or whatever. So I would say Punisher. That's one of them. Mm. He has 34 confirmed kills from the comics. Oh, really? I would have thought that it was more than that. I guess it's just things that are probably showed on a panel somewhere. And these are the heroes, right? Or they are they villains? This, This is heroes and villains. Oh, that makes it a little bit more tough. Honestly, though, like, I'll just show you I'll, Green Goblin. How many kills do you think Green Goblin's committed in the uh, history of Spider-Man in a comic? Cause he Twelve. Is, yeah, because he's considered dangerous. Yes, it's that actually, was right. No, seven. Wow. See, it's a lot less than you think. They don't... <laughs> well, I mean, obviously, that that makes sense. It's cool because under the... They have, like, the little picture, and they have... The kills and whether the kills were heroes, villains, or civilians. And then also they have notable kills. Is uh, Green Goblin one of the lethal? Are yeah. we still playing this game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
It's it's cool though. Like Green Goblin, his notable kills: Gwen Stacy and Hobgoblin. Yep. So it's pretty cool. Uh, but can you guess these other two? Is the Hulk one of them? No. It Hulk. seems like he would. It the seems... Hulk's actually not on here. Oh really? So I was I way off. Uh, I don't know. So the uh, next one is Deadpool. Ah, uh, that makes sense. I should have thought of that one. Thirty-six kills, and the most lethal uh, character in the Marvel universe is Wolverine. Forty-six kills. That should have. Those were obvious. I'm embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's kind of a cool little graph, though. I, I definitely suggest googling it and checking it out. Oh, for sure. Out. That that sounds really interesting. Yeah, that's cool. So that is going to conclude nerd news, though. All right, cool. So our next segment is just kind of our main topic. It uh, changes each episode. This episode, Tyler and I are going to review Tomorrowland, which is a movie that we just saw literally <laughs> right before we started to record. Normally, we like to watch it, watch these movies and kind of give it a day or two to digest. Um, so this is going to be a little bit off the cuff, but hopefully it's not too, <laughs> too, uh, too bad or too, improvised or what what have you um we don't really do a whole lot of research to begin with so <laughs> it can't be a whole lot different basically tomorrowland is a sci-fi sci-fi film starring george clooney based on the disney theme parks well i wouldn't say that <laughs> well i mean it shares a name with a segment of a disney thing the two disney theme parks. yeah well i just got or, that off of wikipedia <laughs> did you yeah i'm so used to you writing these yourself i know i well, I wrote that little bit before we actually saw the movie, so. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Anyways, broad strokes. What did you think of Tomorrowland? I thought it was a movie. It was no. a movie. <laughs> <laughs> we were, speaking of improvis- improvising, no, it's hard to say because I didn't really like it. It was okay, but it, but I didn't hate it. Yes. I, I disliked it more <laughs> more than I liked it. Okay. This movie isn't for me. <laughs> it just, I realized it as soon, oh, I, not as soon as it started, but pretty quickly that this yeah. was, mo- this was a movie that wasn't geared towards me. I love sci-fi, but it was kitty sci-fi. Yeah, definitely. It was, I didn't realize it was PG until I got to the theater. I, me either. It was like, there's a lot of kids here. And then I looked and I was like, oh shit, it's PG. <laughs> <laughs> but. It was way too on the nose because it is a PG movie, so they had to have – like, kids had to be able to understand what was going on. The wolf story thing bugged me that they kept <laughs> bringing that up. It was just so – everybody's got to be optimistic, and it just – for me, that's not how I want my sci-fi. So this movie was super preachy, speaking about being optimistic and stuff. Yes. Super preachy. Yeah, it basically – in order to save the world, you have to be optimistic. <laughs> that was it. That was the yeah. whole theme of the movie. And they literally beat you over the head with it. Oh, fuck yeah. It's ridiculous. Yep. Love the robots. Yeah. I, 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 I love the, the, the robots that chase them. Yeah. The little girl robot bothered me a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> and not, well, I mean, it, it did bother me in the way that you, you think it would bother me. Uh. But the, the robots that chase them, seem to act like you would think a robot oh, yeah. or an android or whatever you want to call it would act like they're very robotic yeah. in their actions and they're always smiling even though they're t- saying terrible things to you there's they have a smile on, on their face so they seem they seem to act like you would think robots would act the girl robot acted like what you would think a girl would act like yeah. and it was really irritating to me and maybe they're programmed differently, I guess, is how you would justify that. But I just didn't believe her character. I thought the girl did good. She she was – I think she's a talented actress. Yeah. Especially being f- as young as she is. But I just didn't believe her as a robot. Yeah. And then she's super creepy. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's not creepy. George Clooney. <laughs> yes. Basically, not to give too much of the plot away, but I think Tyler will agree that we're not necessarily suggesting going to see this movie anyways. Maybe basically, check it out when it's on Netflix. Yeah. Basically, the plot of this movie is that George Clooney's character, as he's a kid, um, gets recruited to go to Tomorrowland. Eventually, he gets kicked out, and he becomes old. 
well, this little girl that he spent his childhood with that he falls in love with is a robot. So she doesn't ever get any older. So later in the movie, George Clooney is kind of in love with this robot who is a little girl. And it's a very creepy vibe. Very creepy. I just can't believe that they thought anyone who Damon Lindelof, who wrote this movie, thought this was a good idea. Yeah. And nobody stepped in and said, this is fucking creepy. And George Clooney read the script. He's like, I'm fucking in. Yeah. Like, <laughs> All right. We need to. Do a couple of rewrites. I mean, I, I get it because he fell in love with her as a kid and she doesn't get any older. But come on. You, somebody had to see that. This was one of the first things that we said when we got to my house before we said, <laughs> Is, wasn't it creepy that yeah. George Clooney was in love with this little girl? We can't be the only ones that saw no. this. Yeah. So that, that was, that was weird. That took me out of the movie. A lot, actually. <laughs> Another thing that I didn't really like about it is the villain reveal. Whenever he, the, I don't even know if it, whenever this, the person who's the villain signed on to the movie, they said he signed on as the villain. Yeah. So I knew the whole movie that he was the villain. It, well, it wasn't, it didn't even bother me that, that aspect of it. It was the fact that he was such a lame villain. Yeah. Like the whole time he, he wasn't was... <laughs> really a villain. Like yeah. they were still kind of buddies, but they didn't <laughs> like each other. And... The whole time he was revealing his, revealing his whole villain plan. I had, I zoned out. It was really boring. And then I zoned back in. I'm like, Oh <laughs> shit. What did he even, what did he say? Why is he doing but this? I, I was honestly, I was paying attention and I have no fucking idea <laughs> what the plan was. I still have, I was going to ask you hoping that you could enlighten me because I still have no fucking idea no. what that monitor was and why blowing it up had like stopped anything. What the hell yeah. Dr. House's plan was. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't I don't get it. I have literally no idea. This movie was boring and it was convoluted. And, oh, yeah, for sure. And the convoluted is exactly what you're talking about. Like, just nothing is explained. And it's funny be that nothing is explained very well because an hour and a half of this two-hour movie is vague references to Tomorrowland. Yeah. Like, it's all leading – like, they have to do go here and then they have to go here and then they have to go here just to get to Tomorrowland and – the whole time they're being really secretive about it. And then when they finally get there and you're expecting that all of these things to be revealed, it's so convoluted that it's so hard to follow. And why did it get run down? I don't know. Like <laughs> they say, well, it was an invitation and that place doesn't exist anymore. Why doesn't it exist anymore? What happened? Yeah. Like he's not worried about the earth getting destroyed because they're not going to die in Tomorrowland. Tomorrowland looks like a shithole. Like, why do you... <laughs> <laughs> it's just him and a bunch of robots, too. Exactly. Like, There's no dying? other people. And so do you not age in Tomorrowland? I guess not. I don't know, man. They didn't explain shit. But most of them are robots, so they wouldn't explain... Well, he makes a comment. Like, George Clooney makes a comment about the character that doesn't age and about how he doesn't age. And he says, oh, I'll just keep drinking my shake every morning. Like as a little one off, and they never explain why he stayed the same age since 1964. Yeah, they don't explain anything. <laughs> oh my god! The more I talk about it, the more angry it makes me. <laughs> <laughs> I actually thought that you would be really excited for this movie and really dig it because they do do a, a doo doo. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> they have a lot of references to, yeah, to Disney, and I actually have that in my notes as something that I did like. And the Tomorrowland and Disney World, you can go on the, the Carousel of Progress, and there's a song on this Carousel of Progress that you hear in the movie. And Walt Disney was known for taking all of his rides and his inventions and things to to the uh, oh shit the, the the fair. What is it called? The, the World Fair. The, the New World, York's yeah, yeah, the New York's World World Fair. And obviously, there's a part of the movie where they go on. It's a small world, which actually happened. That was actually at the World Fair that year so that's cool but besides those little winks and nudges here and there like it was it was just a weird way to make tomorrowland a movie i don't understand why they use that name i guess except for maybe recognition brand. yeah brand recognition i was done with this movie after 
after about 20 minutes. Yeah. The pacing was really bad. Like it from the beginning, the pacing was bad. Yeah. And it was just boring. I mean, there yeah. was, there were certain scenes that I liked. I mean, the, the blast from the, from a, from yeah, the past yeah. or whatever that store was called. That scene was really cool. I mean, I just, I want to live in that store. That <laughs> store looked awesome. I mean, that, that scene was really awesome, but it was so short lived. Like the energy of that scene completely dissipates shortly yeah. afterwards. And yeah. Did you see? I didn't put this in our news, but there was an article this week. It was an interview with Brad Bird, and apparently he was offered Star Wars, and he turned down Star Wars to make this. And Good his, call. his reasoning was, you know, nobody else is going to make this movie. Anybody can make Star Wars, or anybody. There's tons of people that want to make Star Wars, but he wants he wanted really badly to make this movie, and I just don't why? understand why. I guess to preach to us about being global, positive, global warming, and nuclear war and things like that. Yeah. Damon I, Lindelof is not doing himself any favors either. Like I really root for this guy a lot and he just keeps turning out shit. Yeah. I can't even tell you what he's, he wrote Prometheus and he, yeah. got, he got a lot of shit for Prometheus. And I really like what we talked about last episode. Yeah. We both really like that movie, but man, he's got to do something. Yeah. He's got to do something better. I've never seen an episode of lost. Neither have I, <laughs> but yeah, I just, I I don't know I I don't want to continue to just shit on this movie. <laughs> I'm literally trying to think of things as you were talking that I liked about the movie. I mean, other than that scene that I, I talked about in in the store, honestly, I'm coming up blank. I, like I said, I, I liked the girl. I thought she was a talented actress. I didn't like her character really. I mean, I again, I don't think she acted Which like one? a robot. Ro- robot girl. Okay. Yeah. Um. The other one was just okay. I mean, she wasn't bad. She yeah. wasn't great. I just didn't buy her character as a robot, but I thought the the girl was really good. Yeah. I thought that there could have been more with the the little brother. I thought he was really cute yeah, and funny. Yeah, yeah. And I, I recognized him from something. I know it bothered me. He wasn't on the screen for very long, but every time he was on the screen, it bothered me that I couldn't think of what he was in. Looper. Ah, Looper. He didn't look like he's aged much since Looper. No, he hasn't. <laughs> like that movie, that movie like, was like four years ago. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I liked him. I mean, Tim McGraw didn't help the movie at all. That was Tim McGraw? Yeah. You didn't know that that was Tim McGraw? No. Maybe I'm getting my country singers mixed up, but the, he was one of them. Yeah. He's married to Faith Hill, right? Tim McGraw is the one married to Faith Hill. Because that was definitely Tim McGraw then. It, it was, was that Tim, Brad It was Crazy? Tim McGraw, but I do not know who he's married to. Yeah, he's married to Faith Hill. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Which doesn't change my opinion of Tomorrowland at all. No, he, he wasn't, he wasn't in it enough to affect me, but I wasn't impressed with him in Friday Night Lights. I don't think he's a very good actor. Wasn't he in, uh, The Blind Side as well? Yeah, maybe. That's another football movie. That seems unlikely <laughs> that he's yeah. in two football movies. He was in The Blind Side. I did not see, uh, Friday Night Lights on here though. Oh, really? Did I screw that up? <laughs> Fuck, maybe I was kind of confused with Blindside. I could have swore he was in Friday Night Lights. Fuck. Yeah, he was. He okay, was. cool. All right, we're good. I don't retract that fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still keeping that one in there. But, I mean, that's that. I mean, that's all I have for Tomorrowland. I feel like we're just rambling at this point. Yeah, uh, for sure. Uh, this conversation's been more entertaining than this movie was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it wasn't good. Don't see it. I, I feel like... You got me with that joke, and I actually posted it on Twitter, our little uh, text message conversation before the movie started. I really believed that you <laughs> went to see Poltergeist, and now I kind of wish that we had just seen that one instead. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I didn't get a chance to tell you this, but so I, I sat down in the theater, and there was a little girl sitting next to me. I mean, there were a couple of seats away from me. I wasn't sitting next to you. You didn't have girls. a George Clooney movement. No, I did no. not. Oh, okay. And I read your text message about, about going to see Poltergeist. So, uh, what theater are you in? I don't remember exactly yeah. how you, how you phrased it. And I said, you gotta be fucking kidding me <laughs> out loud. And the girls looked at me and I was like, Oh, that was awkward. And her dad looked at me like, you fucking asshole. <laughs> This movie is PG. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you got me, you son of a bitch. I knew I would. I responded. I added on yeah. that I'm just kidding right away because I knew that you would think that I was dumb enough to go to Poltergeist. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> you're dumb. So, <laughs> but yeah, I, uh, I kind of wish we had done this, uh, the other way around and seen Poltergeist first. Well, actually, I, if I were to do it again, I would have just saw Poltergeist and then we would have reviewed something else or yeah. talked about something else next I mean, week. In all fairness, Poltergeist is getting bad reviews. Yeah. So I think, uh, I don't know. We'll, we're going to review it next week, right? So, yeah, for sure. So we'll see. All right. So star rating. Two and a half. Two and a half. Uh, I was flirting between one and a half and two. <laughs> Uh, I think I'll just give it two for this. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why, honestly. <laughs> it makes no difference. I will never see this movie again. After the response this movie is getting, and I don't think that it's going to make a lot of money, I think Brad Bird's going to be begging to direct a Star Wars movie. Yeah, no fucking chance. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. No. Actually, I think he's doing The Incredibles 2 next, so he has his other oh, franchise yeah, yeah. to fall back on. I forgot that that was him. Yeah. It was a long time ago before yeah. the. I mean, he did Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, which was fine. Did he? Yeah. That was like his first live action movie, I th- I believe. Cool. It's like the pacing in that movie was great. Yeah. Pacing well, I mean, was- that made, that movie made sense. So <laughs> I understood what was happening in that movie. <laughs> Things were explained. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, let's, let's, uh, be done with Tomorrowland forever. Please. Yeah. yeah. Sounds great. So our last segment. Uh, we just kind of, uh, plainly named it, uh, nerd favorite. We ask each other a question. What's your favorite blank? And we go back and forth. It's my week this week. And since we kind of talked about a Disney property, <laughs> um, Tyler's a huge Disney nerd. He's talked about it before on the podcast. I figured it would be kind of cool to talk about what our favorite Disney ride is. Yeah. I'm not really versed in all of <laughs> things Disney. I've only gone to Disney World twice, and one time it was when I was in the fourth grade, so that <laughs> barely counts. I've never been to Disneyland, so any California <laughs> listeners, yeah. I apologize. My answer is going to be from Disney World, and it is Splash Mountain. I know that's not a very interesting answer. That's like you survey ten people, and that's – yeah. Six or seven. <laughs> like, I mean, that's, that's the number one answer on Family Feud, basically. <laughs> In all fairness, though, that's a good answer. Like, that's a dope ride. Yeah. I, I like it a lot because you, you walk by it and it just looks like this huge drop, which it is, but there's also, I mean, it's a decent ride. Like, you yeah. go and you have a uh, miniature drops. Like, I was kind of freaking out because when I was in the fourth grade, the first time yeah, I went. Yeah. I was terrified of it. It looked like a huge drop. And then, but it, they work you up to it a little oh, bit. Yeah. And I really appreciated that. And I mean, I still have, well, I, I'm assuming my parents have it. I don't have it in my possession of the picture of me going down Slash Mountain. Yeah. Um, and I used to walk by that in our old house a lot. And I'm kind of nostalgic for that. <laughs> it's just a fun ride. And the, the, the latest time that I went to it, I think I was in high school. Yeah. And we went on it like 10 times because I just wanted to keep <laughs> going on it. Um, I'm not crazy about the rides at Disney World. So Splash Mountain is definitely by far my favorite. Yeah, I love Splash Mountain. I had this similar story whenever I was in second grade and I went with the first time for, with my family. Is I was terrified of drops like that. And there's a bunch of little drops as yeah. you work your way up and every little drop I thought it was the big drop I about <laughs> pissed my pants like three times on that ride but it's, it's awesome it tells a story throughout the whole thing and it's, it's cool but my favorite Disney ride is the Haunted Mansion never so, been on it you never went on the Haunted Mansion nope I love this ride because I mean both of you and I are big horror fans and this isn't like really scary or anything but it's cool you go you're standing in line and there's this big terrifying mansion that's sitting on this hill and uh, there's a bunch of cool things that happen in the line queue and you get into a waiting area and you, they file as many people that, as they can in this small room and the room begins to shrink or it's optical illusions obviously but yeah. it, you, it begins to look like you're shrinking and the lights go out and there's bit this big clap of thunder and there's this guy hanging from the rafters above you and it's not like an animatronic or anything it's some kind of projection Sure. Um, and it's kind of hard to see, uh, but, but he's up there. I, I guess they don't want to make it too prominent for the little kids in Disney World, but yeah. it, it's kind of pretty adult for Disney. And after that, you lo- go into an area and you get on your buggy and you go through 
the haunted mansion and, and there's cool things everywhere. There's a bunch, there's, I wouldn't call it interactive, but at some one point at towards the end of the ride, you're going past these mirrors and some kind of projection makes it look like there's ghosts on your buggy and they're fucking with you and they're switching your head with the person that's in the buggy with you. And there's just a lot of cool things behind it. There was, there's this whole thing online you can read about how it was going to have like the central story about a bride that's in the, in the haunted mansion, this ghost bride who chopped off the, the her husband's head and she's been married like five times. And they kind of did away with that and just made it more of a generalized haunted mansion without a centralized story. But there's all these remnants of the story that they almost put into it. So it's kind of cool to read that and then go on it. But just because all of these little, I don't know, nooks and crannies to the ride, uh, I would say that's why it's my favorite. Uh, Brittany and I went there for our honeymoon and it was right around Halloween time. And we, they had like a Halloween party thing. Yeah. Um, and they did a lot of cool stuff for the Haunted Mansion. It, it was, it was really cool. So that's uh, my favorite Disney ride. Is the Eddie Murphy movie. <laughs> I have <laughs> they, not seen the Eddie Murphy movie. But I mean, this might be a stupid question, but is it based on, I mean, they yeah. do that. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. I did. I was yeah, not aware of that. That's a Disney movie. Uh, yeah. The, and, uh, what's cool is I, I don't think this will ever get made, but Guillermo del Toro is apparently writing and wants to make a haunted mansion movie. And he has so many things that he wants to do and tries yeah. to do, and they all get canceled or pushed back or whatever. So I don't think that it ever come to fruition, but apparently do you think it would be what that story you were just t- talking about. That'd be cool if it yeah. was, but I don't know. I don't know. I know he was going to go with something a little bit darker <laughs> than the Eddie movie, Eddie Murphy movie. A little oh bit, yeah. Something <laughs> a little bit more. I haven't um, seen the movie, but I'm yeah. assuming it's later Eddie Murphy movies. Yeah. So I've, it's I've, probably garbage. I haven't seen it either, but I've heard it's terrible. Yeah. But it's awesome. I can't believe you didn't go on it. The two times you've been to Disney. I, I don't know why I didn't go on it. Yeah. Like I said, I I love the atmosphere of Disney World. Yeah. But I'm not crazy about the rides. I remember more stage shows than I do rides. If that 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 might sound weird, like both times that we went, it seemed like my dad got called up for. Have you ever seen the like the stage show, the like the stunt? Yeah, the stunt spectacular. Yeah. I remember that because yeah. both times that we went, my dad got called up on the stage both times. So mm-hmm. I remember that. The Men in Black isn't at Disney World, would it? No, that no, would have been at Universal. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, obviously Jaws is at Universal, and I love that ride. Yeah. So, I think they took that out for yeah. the Simpsons area. Yeah, I think so. I've never been to Universal. I oh, really? Yeah, anytime we go to Orlando, I just like want to stay at Disney. That's weird. I think I love Universal. <laughs> I actually like Universal more than I think I, mean, I like Disney. That World. would make, I mean, that would make more sense. I could see you liking Universal more. I mean, it's more adult. Yeah. Uh, Brittany and I are thinking about going back to Disney at the end of September. Like we both love it. And I was thinking about presenting the idea to her to maybe take a day away from Disney and go to Universal. But oh, I thought you meant inviting us. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the more the merrier. Yeah, I just, I love nah, Disney. Nah, we probably won't go. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I love Disney and I love like sharing it with people and I don't know. It's cool. All right. So I think that'll about do it. That was, that was a pretty quick episode. Yeah, it was. I, maybe if Tomorrowland <laughs> was better, we would have yeah. uh, had more things to Hopefully, say. Hopefully, uh, we like Poltergeist, uh, more than some of the critics out yeah. there because it's not getting good reviews, but I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. The trailer looked creepy. I love Sam Rockwell. Sam Rockwell's so, awesome. Yeah, so I, I have high hopes for it. Maybe I shouldn't, yeah. and maybe it'll be just as short as Tomorrowland. Uh, I'm hoping that the negative reviews and the negative reception it's getting is going to make my standards for it lower. Sure. And then, I'll, and then Tomorrowland will also make my standards for it lower, <laughs> and I'll end up enjoying it. So that's what I'm hoping for. All right, cool, man. So... As always, you can follow us on Twitter at The Nerds Podcast, like us on Facebook, follow us on Google+, Plus. check out our YouTube page, vote for us for our podcast of the month at podcastland.com. Uh, you can email us, any comments, suggestions, pretty much anything at the nerd you're looking for at gmail.com. Rate, review, subscribe at iTunes, Stitcher Radio, basically any good podcast directory, we're on it. Check out our website, thenerdspodcast.com. I posted a review of Mortal Kombat X today. I guess it will be a couple of days ago once you hear this, but um, definitely check that out. 
I've been posting uh, some Blu-ray Tuesdays. I started that back up. It's not quite as extensive as Tyler used <laughs> to. Um, basically, it's just a preview of, of what came out uh, that Tuesday. So I've yeah. been posting those. So check those out. Check out our booth at Indie PopCon. That's coming up in about a month now. Yeah, that's getting Definitely really looking close. forward to that. Um, we're going to be reve- revealing a new logo here soon. Uh, probably by the time you listen to this episode, we probably have already busted that out. So let us know what you think about that. Think that about do it? I think so, man. All right. For Patrick Coon. Tyler Hunt. We are the nerds you're looking for. Take it easy, guys. Later. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Nerd You're Looking For podcast, a weekly podcast. Fuck. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna take that from the top. <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> I haven't had to do this in a while. A weekly podcast. <laughs> it's gonna be a long night.